Assalamu alaikum students. So we are beginning uh, the ECG lecture series and this lecture is uh, regarding basic concepts about the ECG. The gentleman over here uh, is uh, he's known as Willem uh, Einthauer. He was a Dutch uh, physician scientist. And guess what this is? No, this is not a sewing machine. This is the first prototype of the ECG machine. He, dis he invented the ECG machine. Okay, right. Uh, so normal ECG, uh, there are some basic concepts over here uh, regarding uh, partial depolarization and polarization, which I will be uh, discussing in detail when I will talk about uh, how cardiac uh, uh, vectoral analysis uh, is done, okay, in, in, in later lectures. Uh, but for now, it suffice to know that ECG is produced only when current flows through the heart and current only flows through the heart when there is there are there is a patch of uh, depolarized uh, myocardium and there's a patch of polarized i.e resting myocardium okay so whenever you have these two um, poles of for current current actually develops and it flows from the depolarized towards the polarized part um, uh, it does not measure so ECG is not a measure of absolute voltages it's rather relative to a baseline okay and as you have uh, seen in the in your uh, in your practicals uh, videos of which uh, are available on the channel uh, you know that the speed there's a certain speed at which the paper is rotated uh, to record the ECG and there is a specific voltage which is given here on to what the normal ECG looks like uh, as you can see, this is the typical ECG. It's easy to make, so please make sure that you practice enough um, uh, enough times on ideally a graph paper like that, like this. Um, but even if it's not available to you, uh, it's it's better that you uh, are careful in the way you make it, such that uh, the P and the T wave proportions uh, you give special attention to. Uh, remember the p wave is smaller and should be smaller in a normal person when you draw it than the t wave okay uh, these are not arbitrary uh, uh, deflections they have very specific meanings and hence the amplitude also has a specific meaning so you need to be careful uh, and qrs also first it goes down to make the q then the r and then the s and then it comes back okay and then very importantly once we've uh, spoken about how to uh, be careful about the curves themselves, the isoelectric lines. So this is the isoelectric line here, right here. So between P and Q wave, you have an you have a flat line. You should make that. Uh, it doesn't need to be this thick. He's just emphasized this. Okay. Uh, so this is an isoelectric line, i.e., a straight line. And then from the S to the beginning of the T wave, there is a uh, ST segment, which needs to be also flat. All right. In some individuals, you may have a U wave. We'll talk about this. this uh, on the on the y-axis, you have the millivolts uh, shown, and on the x-axis, you have the time in seconds. Okay. Now, what does the P wave? How does the P wave form? P wave is due to atrial depolarization. Atrial depolarization. Remember, but this is not a mechanical uh, graph. This is a graph which depicts a uh, electric electrical uh, sequence of things so it ha it has since look it's millivolts volt means it's a unit of electricity okay so please do not say in a viva that this is formed by atrial contraction that's a blunder of the ecg viva this is atrial depolarization which then leads to atrial contraction which is somewhere around here Okay, somewhere around here cannot be shown here because it's a it's an electrical monitor, okay? not not a mechanical monitor. However, if there's a problem with the atria or atrium, then uh, this will be formed in a in a it will its its shape will be deformed, and then you can infer from that that okay there is such and such such and such problem with the atrial musculature. However, the line itself. It's an electrical monitor, as I have mentioned. Okay, so be careful when you respond uh, and make this concept that P wave is actually an electrical event. 
it's due to an electrical event and that electrical event is atrial depolarization its normal range is 0.08 to 1 then you have the pr interval this river uh, two very important events are happening, the atria contracting and very, very importantly, the cardiac impulse is now passing through the AV node, okay? It's passing through the AV node and during that passage, you know, it gets delayed. Uh, it's, it's isoelectric here, not because of the absolute absence of current, there is a small amount of current that does, that is flowing through the AV node. Uh, so it's not the absence, rather the magnitude of that current is so small that it cannot be picked uh, from the recording ECG uh, electrodes. We would expect that cardiac impulse now has entered the Purkinje system and instantaneously because the Purkinje system is very fast in its transmission, uh, uh, it will be uh, instantaneously delivered to the ventricular muscles and they will go into depolarization. So ventricular depolarization happens and this is this is what's behind QRS complex. In the vectorial analysis uh, uh, lecture, we will we will discuss, uh, uh, and it's actually a quite nice discussion of how exactly is the Q, R, and S wave are formed. I mean, why are they so funny looking? Uh, uh, it's very peculiar the the shape of this uh, this complex. But trust me, there's a whole science behind it. All right. Okay. Um, so ventricular depolarization occurs and its value is, its normal range is 0.06 to 1 again. Then in ST segment, as I mentioned earlier, uh, takes place normally and it should be flat, horizontal. Remember, this is a very key point. Remember this, uh, we will discuss this in the clinical aspect, in the clinical section of the, this lecture series. But for now, ST segments being horizontal means that the person does not have any ischemia in his heart, okay? If this deviates downwards or upwards, then there are all sorts of problems um, which point to you, uh, in, uh, point you in the direction of uh, maybe a myocardial infarction, which is a common, uh, commonly known as a heart attack, okay? So the ST segment is the segment where uh, you need to be looking at when you'll be seeing your patient's ECG, okay? Following that, you have the T wave. T -wave. Uh, look at the magnitude of the T wave. T wave is due to ventricular repolarization. Okay, and um, you can see that um, this repolarization curve, uh, since it's uh, related to ventricles, it's big. Okay, uh, so again, I will caution you: making the P and the T wave should be appropriate to the uh, chamber behind them. So atria are small and hence their electrical activity is small. Ventricles are big, hence the electrical activity and the deviation and the graph is big, proportionately big according to their size. Okay. Um, before I come to the segments, let me just uh, 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 say a few words about the U wave. U wave is an inconsistent finding. Uh, it, it can be a normal finding. And in some uh, young uh, adolescents or athletes, um, this can be due to ven some ventricular myocytes with longer than normal action potential, okay? So that's that. This can be a question to a good student in a viva. Coming to PR interval, uh, remember PR interval is uh, atrial depolarization plus AV nodal delay. These are little semantics that you need to remember. So PR interval means that the P, the whole wave, uh, is in, included in the interval, okay? PR segment, however, does not include the P wave. This is an important uh, point to note. So PR interval is what we generally are concerned with when we are talking about uh, heart blocks. Heart blocks is something that we will discuss in the clinical section of the ECG lectures, but for now, you should know exactly what the PR interval is, okay? So atrial depolarization plus AV nodal delay, I've mentioned this before, uh, please remember this, uh, this value, particularly 0.12 to 0.2. Remember, 0 0.12 to 0 0.20 is the normal range for PR interval, okay? Anything which is longer than 0.2 uh, will be considered abnormal, and uh, uh, we, we will say that, the, that there is a conduction block in the heart. More on this. In the, in the clinical segment, okay? 
Um, ST segment, I've just mentioned it. ST segment is that, that segment which gives, tells you about the ischemia uh, or, or the lack of it, uh, just by looking at its shape. It's an isoelectric period of deep, of deep polarized ventricles, okay? Um, this is, by the way, uh, where, when the uh, contraction of the ventricles is happening. Again, it's similar to what I explained about regarding the atria. So during the ST segment, you will you should expect that the plateau portion of the action potential is actually taking place and they are contracting because the calcium ions are coming in, okay? Right, uh, the ST segment is not uh, usually uh, normally measured uh, unless there's a problem. Uh, then there is a QT interval and let's say uh, the QT interval is from the beginning of the Q wave here to the end of the T wave, okay? Its value is 0.2 to 0.4. Uh, this is a measure of the complete action potential sequence, including depolarization, length of uh, depolarization, and length of repolarization. I e. it corresponds to the action potential, uh, entire action potential duration. Now, this is clinically important because um, if you have a heart in which the QT interval is uh, uh, reduced, uh, one of the reasons may be that the heart rate is more. If the heart rate is more, what, what, does, what does that mean? If, if there is a, what is the normal heart rate? 72 beats per minute, right? What if it's 100 beats per minute? Well, if it's 100 beats per minute, then obviously the heart is being stimulated at a rate of 100 cardiac impulses or 100 action potentials in a minute, right? So the length of the action potential will have to decrease to accommodate these additional action potentials. Okay, so QT interval in increased heart rates decreases. Next up is ECG leads. Uh, now we are looking at how the ECG is physically recorded. Um, uh, so we, you must have seen an ECG uh, uh, being performed on, on a person. If you haven't, well, uh, there is a whole array of electrodes as, uh, which are attached during this procedure uh, on the surface of the body at specific points. What are those specific points? Each arm and leg. Uh, and a total of six electrodes which are placed on the on the chest. So each arm and leg gets an electrode, uh, a, 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 a recording electrode. We don't insert or electrocute people. It's just a, on the surface. We just attach it and the patient is comfortable. Don't worry about that. And then six electrodes are present, are, are attached uh, uh, to, the, to the chest. Uh, when we're talking about ECG, and there are three sets of leads. Uh, one is the standard limb leads, also called bipolar limb leads because they have a, pl a plus and a minus positive and negative terminal. Uh, then there are augmented limb leads, which are called unipolar. We will talk about that. <clears throat> and then you have the chest leads, which I just mentioned, these six ones, these are also unipolar. Uh, and these are the uh, bipolar uh, limb leads. Uh, these ones, these ones here, AVL, AVR and AVF, they are the uh, unipolar uh, limb leads. And then you have uh, the chest, the six chest leads, V1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, right here on the chest. This also you can see it here. And even here you have it, I have a very clear view of the chest leads, okay? So uh, we can start from uh, this, uh, the limb leads. So the limb lead one, it's denoted classically by the Roman one, two, three. So limb lead one, the positive terminal on the, is on the left arm uh, and the negative one is on the right arm, okay? And uh, for, limb, uh, for uh, uh, polar, bipolar uh, limb lead two, you have the negative terminal on the right arm and the positive terminal on the left leg. And similarly, <clears throat> limb lead three, you have the positive terminal on the left leg and the negative terminal on the left arm. Okay, details of these leads will be discussed after the Victorian analysis lecture. Please uh, note this down. And at the end of that, I'll be integrating that analysis along with uh, the ECG leads. This is, that is the place where you will actually be able to understand the details of why we place these leads um, and where we place these leads, okay? Why are they several leads? Why can't we just have a few? Why do we have 12 leads, three plus three augmented plus six chest? This is a six uh, lead ECG. 
uh, uh, and the location is specific. It's not random. Uh, so all of those details will be discussed after I explain to you uh, some of the nitty gritties of the uh, of the current, uh, the way it flows in the heart, uh, where it flows, what happens, all that sort of uh, stuff. It's very interesting. Uh, now. Uh, remember, one thing was missing, uh, the R, uh, this uh, right leg, this terminal here, there's an electrode or here as well. And this serves as a ground uh, terminal, an earth, uh, so to speak. It does not record anything, okay? Uh, why are these these leads, one, two, and three, called bipolar? Because they, they the, the, the two terminals are active recording terminals. So if there is any electrical disturbance uh, or event, uh, rather, which moves towards, which switch, which goes towards the positive terminal will be recorded. Any electrical event which goes towards the negative terminal will be recorded. Same is the case with this second lead and this third lead. So remember, one of the main key differences of bipolar limb leads with uh, both of the uh, unipolar sets of leads is that in bipolar leads, both terminals are act can actively record. Now, what do they record? This comes in handy, this diagram. So when there is a, 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 a flow of current, uh, a depolarization uh, wave called cardiac vector, we will again discuss it in the vector analysis in detail. Whenever there's a cardiac vector or simply put a depolarization wave, which is heading towards a positive terminal, this will be depicted as an upward deflection on the ECG. Okay, just, just remember that. And similarly, when there is a, a vector, uh, the same vector, it is going away from the positive or towards the negative terminal, uh, then there will be a downward uh, deflection of the uh, ECG wave. Okay, when this vector is perpendicular to the to the axis of the lead, then the ECG will not show any deflection. It will rather show a flat uh, baseline. Now coming to the augmented limb leads, they, uh, these, as I said, are unipolar again. So we have AVR, AVL, and AVF. Okay. Now even though that there are two electrodes that are used for each lead, only one. Uh, uh, actually called the exploring electrode records the electrical activity. The other electrode is set at zero potential, uh, which is neutral reference point. Okay. So let, let's take an example. Let's take the example of AVR. Okay. AVR here terminal, this terminal is the recording terminal. Uh, uh, while the rest of the body serves as a neutral, uh, a neutral point or ne neutral reference point. Okay. Similarly, when AVL is recording, the rest of the body is the is the neutral reference point, and same is the case with AVF. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, talking about the chest leads, uh, when we have the V1 to V6 chest leads, they are also unipolar, and each uh, one of these leads is the ex quote unquote exploring electrode. When you are recording, for example, a V1, the rest of the body will be set at zero or reference point and only v1 will record why do we augment this uh, this th uh, this this thing uh, the question can come uh, why isn't bipolar limb lead enough uh, for an ecg or clinical purposes well augmentation as the word in english uh, refers to it it's to augment it's to pronounce so augmented limb leads and these chest leads they basically pronounce the electrical act, the recording of the electrical activity by about 50%. Okay, so that's a that's a remarkable pronunciation of such a small amount of potential that goes through the heart uh, normally. Um, a concluding point of this diagram is look at this uh, triangle. This this triangle, it's called Einthoven's uh, triangle, and uh, th there is an Einthoven's law as well. Einthoven's law states that if uh, the potential or the value of voltage, uh, potential voltage is known, the third can be predicted by just summing up uh, the known two. So for example, if you know the potential of lead one and two, you can simply add these together and the volt, the potential of lead three uh, will be that 
uh, sound amount. This is just a sneak preview of what we'll be discussing uh, after the vectorial analysis um, lecture. Uh, but just to give you a, a, a flavor of this, uh, look at look. We have the uh, Einthoven's uh, triangle here. It's a simplified schematic diagram. Lead one is this. This is lead two, and this is lead three. This is uh, references left arm, right arm, and left leg. Okay, we've just done this. Now, if you remove the leg legs and the extra data, and just make axis. Okay, so this this bring it down to this level. So this becomes a horizontal line going through the heart. And then this also, you bring it into the heart like this. This becomes lead two. And then this one here becomes lead three. So what you've done is you have moved this diagram at the level of the heart and you make these three planes. Uh, this is how the leads look at the heart. So this is, this is the plane uh, which is uh, being manned by lead one this is by lead two and this is by lead three. So this is where you can imagine that somebody is looking at the heart from this. Any electrical activity going on in the heart will be recorded here, here and here. Okay. And, and correspondingly, if there is a uh, 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 vector which is towards the negative side of uh, these uh, limb leads uh, will be recorded as a downward deflection accordingly. Uh, now let's just bring in the axial reference system. So Eindhoven's triangle to the axial reference system is a very unique concept, again, which will be discussed later. But this lead one actually is, lies at the zero, uh, 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 zero degree. So basically, it's just like a graph paper, okay, which you have done many times under your in your uh, FSC or A level years. This is zero, okay. This is this point is plus ninety. Okay, this is uh, uh, 180 and this is either 360 or minus 90. It depends on how you are looking at it. Okay, zero plus 90, 180 and uh, minus 90 or 360. So this is the axis on which lead one lies at, let me just clear this, it lies at zero degrees. Uh, and if that was the line, uh, it's a bit crooked, uh, never mind. Lead two lies at about 60 degrees. Lead, lead three lies at about 120 degrees. Okay, so that's that. And if you see, superimpose uh, the augmented leads, uh, you have uh, quote unquote more eyes on the heart and look what additional data you can derive. Uh, minus 30 at plus 90 and at minus 150. So you have more eyes on the heart uh, with these six uh, limb leads. And this is uh, why I mentioned that, uh, why do you use the extra three augmented leads is to make it, make the, the reading of the ECG more pronounced. This is just to uh, show you the ECG readings in lead, in, the, in individual leads, you have lead one, lead two, lead three, then you have the AVR, AVF, AVL. And the, the trick here is to look at uh, the R wave in each. So the most pronounced QRS wave, QRS uh, complex. And in that, the most pronounced is the R wave. Just look at the R wave in these individual uh, ECGs and see uh, whether they are going up or down. And that will show you that the cardiac impulse in that particular lead, is it going towards the positive electrode or the negative electrode? Uh, and, and second thing that you need to know, uh, you need to uh, notice always by, 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 by habit is look at the ST segment. And ST segment should obviously be uh, flat uh, in a normal ECG. Finally, uh, this is a, a normal 12 lead ECG, lead one, lead two, lead three. This was made of in sequence, okay, uh, one by one. Then you have the AVR, the AVL, and the, the AVF. Then you have all the chest leads one by one, V12, V12, V6, okay? So that concludes uh, our normal, uh, uh, the basic concepts about uh, ECG and the leads of the ECG.